And joining me from Joss Plateau State to talk more on International Women's Day is a Plateau State Secretary, Women in Mining Nigeria, lecturer in the Department of Geology, University of Jazz, researcher in environmental geology, as well as a trader in gemstones, Mrs. Raulatsu Riwana, Piwana, sorry. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope the weather in just is favorable. In fact, the weather is unbearable. It's now so hot. <laughs> okay. Happy Women's Day. And we, we start uh, with the question, uh, the, the highlights and the role of uh, innovative technology in uh, promoting gender equality is the theme. How do you relate this with your goals and vision in the mining sector? Okay, thank you very much. So, um, innovation, you know, and technology are critical to the mining industry. Uh, digitization and sustainability are two headline factors driving the future of the mining industry. And so, Popular mining technologies include artificial intelligence, automation, GPS technologies, GIS systems, workforce tracking. These are all um, innovative technology that help to drive the mining sector. And I see these technologies improving and closing the gender gap that exists in the mining industry at the moment. Okay, then, where is the place of uh, digitization in mining, considering the technology breakthrough, some of which you, you have mentioned? I'm asking this question in the background of, we, we hear some of the challenges for the sector, particularly not being able to harness its full potentials for economic growth is insufficient uh, geoscience uh, data and perhaps when it is there accessing it is an issue okay so um you've 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 addressed um a part of the question you're asking me you know right now particularly in nigeria using us as a case study digitization of our data is uh, is a serious gap that is still very wide and not yet fully um, integrated to help in the mining sector. But even with that, uh, digitization using, um, because you know what digitization does is to project, is to create similar scenarios we have been able to use this digitization in Nigeria to some extent. Remember, digitization starts from even the littlest of things. In those days, you couldn't even communicate with anybody once the person has left you. A phone device is a form of uh, digital technology that has helped improve you know, our activities on the mining site. So even as little as that, as small as it is, you know, that has improved the mining sector. Um, agreed, we still have the challenge of having network in the core mining sites, because usually it's in the rural area. And um, that is a challenge still at the moment. But okay. the, the gap is, is closing up and we're reaching there little by little. But in the cities, we have this um, access now much more to softwares, to digital technology that helps us to improve projection, um, delineation, testing of all mineral resources that we come across. So digitalization has improved and it's closing the gap in so many ways. And our women are able to participate more because of these avenues that has been created by innovative technology. Okay, 
uh, you, you just mentioned women participation, particularly in the sector, and I understand you personally, you're a gemstone uh, trader. If I may ask, how is the gemstone business? I understand gemstone is one out of so many minerals Nigeria is blessed with. In fact, statistics uh, show we have 40 solid minerals spread across 450 locations across the country. How is the business going, particularly for you and other women? Um, it's, it's, it's going well at the moment, really. It's going well at the moment. We, we, it's just that uh, the usual challenge, you know, we have to always go through a middleman to be able to sell what we have. And that is where the women in mining come in. The women in mining um, headed by and founded by engineer Janet Adeyemi, uh, we are creating um, licensed uh, offices where our women bring in everything they have for sale such that we help them to get value for what they bring in, which eliminates them having to go through a middleman. And so at the moment, we are, we are still at the starting stages. So we have the center in Abuja. We're trying to establish one in Plateau State in collaboration with the Plateau State Mineral Development Agency. So those are the kind of things we're doing just so that the woman will get value for what she finds in the field. Okay, aside these centers, uh, where is the place of technology in helping bridge this gap? Okay. So again, as I've said, uh, the technological gap starts from the basic telephone. Now you don't have to send somebody physically. You can call on phone. Then we have the internet, which helps with so many other aspects. Now in the mining cadastral office, you don't have to go to Abuja to get your mining license anymore. You just go online or through using the internet. You put in your coordinates and you submit your application, meeting all requirements, you know, of what they ask you for. And then they do their homework there. And then they just let you know if it has been approved or not. That has really taken away all, you know, the bureaucratic place of uh, having to meet somebody, having to give somebody something to make sure your file is treated and all that. And then it also has eliminated the issue of you have already applied and somebody else goes and influences and takes the site over you. Now it's just automated. First come, first serve. No more, you know, that aspect of it is all um, taken away. And that's, let say, innovative technology. Another part that has really improved is the use of geophysical softwares, you know, which helps us to delineate areas of high magnetic power, you know, resistivity, all those things which we use to find out if we have anything of interest for us to dig into. So as against before, when you have to have so many staff, it has reduced number of staff that will have to go to the field. And it has improved, it has removed the influence of errors by man. Yes, there will be marginal error, but it's now reduced because of the presence of technology. So Mandy errors are completely removed. So it can only be issues like weather or your battery goes down or something. That is what will introduce error, which is factored into the creation of those uh, softwares and machines, as it were, when you use them on the field. And in which case, again, it now gives the woman a greater participatory role in the mining. So any woman, once she's trained, can interpret geophysical data, can generate GIS data, uh, can communicate through Zoom, through phone, you know. So that those are all the places where um, technology has improved the woman's participation in the mining industry. Okay, uh, th there's also another challenge that has been observed in, in the sector. We have issue of 
uh, not adequate infrastructure as well as investment in this sector in, in areas of not just having mining the raw materials but also processing what efforts do we have on ground to ensure that we, we don't just have these raw materials and we get to sell them raw for people to get to work to, to process them outside this country how can we have in-country raw materials and mining and processing as well as a market so right now at the moment actually there's the exclusive law that has just been signed by the government last year which has even made it a law that um, for our gemstones now you can't export them except they have you know you value added to them and so right now we have a lot well a few not a lot we have a few um lapidaries which have the role of doing the full process so they do the sorting they do the um uh, um cleaning and then they also do the cutting and the polishing and the mounting of the gemstones such that we export them out of the country in their finished state and no more in their raw state. No, okay. Right here in Jos, we have three, about three um, organizations, companies that are into that at the moment that I know of. And I know there's so many in, uh, a few in other states too. Okay, uh, aside, aside James Stone, aside James Stone now and with the new regulation, initially before now, you hear the issues of, of weak legal framework. But now that there is that law that says you cannot export it raw, you have to add value. And like you mentioned, we have three companies who are also doing that. What else are you doing to ensure more investment in that sector so that we don't just have a handful of companies doing this? Because Nigeria is so blessed. Aside yeah. gemstone, like I said earlier, we have 40 solid minerals of high value. Um, another one is uh, recently the Minister for Mines and Steel, you know, with the discovery of lithium all over Nigeria, across the belt, the schist belt. So it runs through from Nasrad down to Taraba. You know, we have discovery of lithium. And um, China came and asked for permits to do the mining of the lithium. And um gladly the minister said no we're not going to give you permission to mine we want you to come and set up your company the battery company here in nigeria that way you get to do what you want to do and we get to benefit beyond just you mining and exporting the lithium from the country so these are some of the ways that government is handling the issue of um, getting maximum value for all the minerals that are found within the country. Thank you so very much, Raul Latu Piuna, for your thoughts. And once more, congratulations and happy inter.